This is one of the hardest days, I think, for me, of the entire week of AirVenture. We're gathered here today as a group of friends to remember family, friends, coworkers, mentors, sharing a passion for flight and remembering those whose enthusiasm for flying so impacted our own lives. We're here to be strong together and to support one another. This memorial wall was built by members who brought stones from around the country, stones from their community, to build it so that they could create a resting place, a memory place, that carried the culture of our organization, a culture that was built on members. Through this wall, we remember and celebrate the lives fully lived and those cut short, taking our loved ones from us long before we were ready to say goodbye. But in their passing, a new chapter in our own lives was begun. Their dreams, their passions, their hope are all now part of our own lives. We are determined to pass on their legacy in a way that impacts those around us. Everyone here is now bound together through this wall. The impact of an individual's life cannot adequately be expressed in this ceremony or in any other gathering. Those who have departed have left a hole in our hearts that no one else nor the passage of time can fill. We are all too familiar with the waves of sorrow and grief that remain part of our lives every day. Yet we are also familiar with the zest for life and the joys of flight that our loved ones experienced and shared with each of us. It is our hope that in this tribute service, you will find renewed strength in their memory and in the loving support of those gathered with you today. Celebrate their memory and take this opportunity to remember with a smile the joy and the love we shared while they were here. Today, I'm going to smile as I remember Cliff Robertson. Our first meeting was more than nine years ago at my first, my very first air venture. I didn't know what to expect. I was running around all day long in this little dress that I had purchased at Fleet Farm for $10 and I was working and cleaning and didn't have a schedule for myself and I was frantic. And as I ran through the lobby, this gentleman pulled me aside and put an arm around me in a very kind and loving way. I knew who he was immediately because I recognized his face. It was Cliff Robertson. He had very poetic dialogue. He embraced me. And I will forever remember the kindness that he shared with me as I panicked over my day. And he said, I know it's very silly, but he said, Look at that lovely dress. And I was thinking in my mind, I bought it for $10 at Fleet Farm. And he was saying, so wonderful to see women dressed in the classic style. And for those of you who know me now for the last nine years, I have never been at AirVenture without a dress. Because in my mind, I see that it had an impact on Cliff. And I want to continue to share that. He had an impact on me. He also was a star for thousands of young people during his lifetime with us as the founding chairman of the Young Eagles program. In the way he inspired me, he in inspired many, many others. In fact, after that first air venture, I too stepped aside and said, I can learn to fly. I want to be part of this community. So when this ceremony gets hard for me, I'm going to think about Cliff, and I'm going to smile to the depth of my soul. It's become our tradition during this gathering to share a wonderful poem that gives us time to reflect. During the dark days of the Battle of Britain, hundreds of Americans crossed the border into Canada to enlist with the Royal Canadian Air Force. 18-year-old John Gillespie McGee was one such American. He was sent to England and he posted to the newly formed 412th Fighter Group. On September 3rd, 1941, McGee flew a high-test altitude flight in a new model of the Spitfire. As he orbited and climbed upward, he was struck with an inspirational poem to touch the face of God. Once back on the ground, he wrote a letter to his parents. And in it, he commented, I am enclosing a verse that I wrote the other day. It started at 30,000 feet and was finished soon after I landed. On the back of the letter, he jotted down the now famous poem, High Flight. On December 11th, 1941, just three months later, and only three days after the U.S. entered the war, John Gillespie McGee gave the ultimate sacrifice. Here's the words that he sent to his family. Oh, I have slipped the surly bounds of earth 
and danced the skies on laughter silvered wings. Somewhere I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of, wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious, burning blue, I've topped the wind-swept heights with easy grace, where never lark or even eagle flew. And while with silent, lifting mind I've trod the high, untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand and touch the face of God. Within a few moments, we will read the names of those being inducted in Memorial Wall this year. This will be followed by a missing man formation flight. As our ceremony brochure explains, the pilot in the plane breaks out from the formation. This represents our loved ones who have departed our presence. And as we observe this part of today's ceremony, may our hearts be lifted towards the heavens in their honor in both remembrance, which will tug at your heart forever, and in celebration, as you bring into your mind a glorious thought that always made you smile. Thank you. In just a moment, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. You can just follow along and, and, and just listen to the words, and uh, hopefully they will minister to you uh, in your spirit and soul. I want to encourage you, uh, this is a, a very unique event. Uh, people are drawn here uh, because of their family that they're putting on the wall or friends. Uh, but sometimes uh, families uh, have aviation uh, uh, as a center of their interest. And let me encourage you to come back year after year after year to reflect uh, on their memory. Uh, we're going to uh, observe just a moment of silence and then I'm going to read a prayer to you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, you made the world and everything in it. You are the author of life. You gave us the garden commission to rule and subdue. Your gifts include our dreams and aspirations. You are the source who satisfies every need. Forgive us for placing the treasures that are uncertain and rest in the center of our lives. We find ourselves boxed in by the limitations of time and circumstance. Our hearts consider what might have been. Their absence has left an awful hole in our hearts, once filled with the life and smiles of our loved ones. Help us in our grief to open the door to allow your presence to heal that wound. Teach us in our limitations and loss to seek you. Help us find comfort and healing in your presence. Father, for us, this is sacred ground. We're overwhelmed by the waves of grief. In our suffering, we humble ourselves before you, admitting that we are dependent on you to get us through our grief and sorrow. Today, we thank you for our loved ones we've come to honor. We cherish them and their memory. They taught us to love life, to pursue our dreams, and to step out of our comfort zones to do this. Help us remember that our loved ones are not only precious to us, but they're precious to you as well. Something deep inside cries out that we weren't ready to let them go. We didn't have enough time with them. Father, we've come to this place from so many different journeys of faith. In this moment, we as a congregation are held together by our common grief and our love for someone we loved. And in this moment, Lord, plant in our hearts the hope of resurrection for that timeless moment when we will be reunited with our loved ones in that future day of glory. For those of the Christian faith, we. We celebrate the resurrection of Christ. It's given us hope that there is life beyond the grave, that grave, that death is not is a comma, it's not a period. Assist us by comforting us in all of our grief and trouble. 
Gentle shepherd, tenderly heal our wounds. Our loved ones celebrated life and help us in this moment to do the same. Life is short and every day is a gift from you. Help us in quietness and trust to open our hearts toward you. Our desire is to once again love life and see good days. As the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, we ask you to renew in us a heart of faith and hope. May you fill us with joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of your Spirit. The memorial wall is a tribute to EA members who have not only done great things for aviation, but who have done great things for their families, done great things for our organization, and done great things for the world. It's our pleasure and it's our responsibility to thank them for what they've accomplished in their lives and to celebrate that and to forever memorialize them here in a beautiful place. I'll now read the names of those who have gone west. Daniel Anderson, Ronald L. Anderson, Ronald Aspigren, John L. Bakken, Michael Bernadin, Bill Beswick, Stan Bloyer, Fernando Botalio, Kerry Bowles, Joshua Brim, Barbara Brink, Thomas Casagrande, Nathan Klein, Dean Cochran, Dan Cook, Donald Duza, Leonard Eaves, David Ellis, Amanda Franklin, Michael Gillis, Harold Graves, George Greenleaf, Dean Hall, Charles Howry, Jack Hirsch, Samuel James, William D. Johnson, Espy, better known as Butch Joyce, Linda Kiskowski, Henry Kimberly, Donald D. Klein, Jr., Richard Kralchik, Jimmy Leeward, Gene Littlefield, Harry J. Longway, Don Marco, Jr., Joseph Mathias, Donald Maziars, James F. McCartney, Denny Mercer, Ted Mossman, Lois Nash, Kiwi Nenninger, Carol Palmer, John Powers, Chauncey Prady, 
Scott S. Preninger, Harold Pryor, Virginia Raybun, Earl Risto, Cliff Robertson, Beth Rogers Johnson, Beatrice L. Scherf, Nick Serafinov, Michael Seymour, M.D. Short, Doug Slade, Thomas R. Seringen, Scott T. Tizak, Benjamin Oskert, Hans Vanderflug, Alan J. Wise, Joanne Culp Woody, and Harry C. Seisloft. If you'd like to stand for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Father, we thank you for our loved ones. They, they mean so much to us. As we're with family and friends, help us to encourage one another, sometimes just with presence, sometimes with silence, and other times with words. Help us to uh, deal with the things that we, we are suffering that we have, and also the joy that they've left in our lives. We pray this in your name. Amen. This is it, and you can stay around all you want. <laughs>